Welcome everybody to another quick hitter short segment here for the All Things Blues and Southern Rock Facebook page. Jason is not able to join us tonight, so uh, without Jason as my safety net, I hope I don't crash and burn. But fortunately, I have the one and only Drew Fulton, lead singer from Magnolia Bayou, is going to talk about the new single and amongst other things. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. I just had a uh, big old shrimp po' boy for dinner, and I'm washing that down with a cold beer so nice. <laughs> i'm good how you doing yeah, i'm good i'm good uh, up here in north dakota we actually are having some swampy weather um so i told myself i'm not going to complain about the swampy weather after all the cold so i just grilled some sliders tonight so nice I mean, nice good to your shrimp po' boy but <laughs> i'm sure it's great man so uh before we start talking about music you are a newly married man I am, yes, sir. Married. So when when did this happen and to whom? Uh, I got married to my fiance. Oh, she's not my fiance anymore. She's my wife. But I got married to uh, my wife, Piper. Uh, we've been together for almost eight years now. We got married at the beginning of May. So congratulations very much. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, man. So let's get right to this new single. Uh, why don't you tell us, you know, how did this come about? Is this a new try? Is it new, something new written? Is it left over from the sessions uh, for Strange Place? Uh, no, it wasn't a part of the uh, sessions for Strange Place. It's, we have a lot of original songs that have just been kind of sitting in the bank. And obviously going into the, the studio to record a new album is, um, is not... Uh, in the realm of possibility right now and mm -hmm. so we've been kind of itching to get some new stuff out and we didn't get to tour on the album when it came out so we wanted to have something fresh out there and we've never done a music video so we wanted to have a nice professionally shot music video to kind of push us into tour we're fixing to start touring again in june we have some dates that are going to be announced pretty soon so we just wanted kind of something to put out there to kind of light up our spotify again and and uh bring some attention back to us so that when we start touring on the album we can you know shift everyone's attention back to that release so the song's been in the bank for about two years um so i think i we started writing this song in 2019 i sort of right we went out on the road for our long damn ride summer tour and i started writing that song in the van about 2019 so right on so why don't you give it to tell the folks the name of the track and uh, anything you can, I know like songwriters sometimes like to be vague, so <clears throat> let the listener, you know, come up with their own uh, meaning of the song. No, man. It's a, so the song's called train don't stop. And it's kind of about it's the first lyric is uh, grab your ticket in a window seat. We'll escape this nine to five by the skin of our teeth. So it's kind of about the idea that we are, you know, we've as musicians for the last six years we have been working these day jobs to get by you know as we transition into a full touring outfit and it's about kind of transitioning into becoming a full-time tour musician you know we're, we're jumping on this train and we're just going with it and we're, we're leaving our nine to five behind and we're making a leap of faith just to do what we love as a career and the idea for Train Don't Stop, the initial lyric came about, we had some issues with some, some band personnel, uh, some members about uh, two or so years ago. And we had a meeting to rectify some of the issues. And Kevin, and he had made the statement. He said, that uh, this train don't stop for no one or anything. And I remember I jotted that down in my notes. I said, I'm going to use that for something in the future. And then we were, when we were in the van to Idaho about two years ago, we had a little mini guitar in the van. And I remember I was just picking on it. And I, this riff I did just came to me and kind of sat there and shaped it. I, I think I shaped it for about two weeks before I put it together. And then, of course, I brought it to the band when we got back home from the tour. And we just put this monster tune together. And that's what it's really about, man. It's just about, you know, no one or as a band, we've, we've come across a lot of obstacles in our career. And so it's kind of about not letting anything get in our way. You know, nothing's going to stop this train and we're going to leave behind these nine to five jobs. And we're going to, we're going to commit to this and do it full time, no matter what. That's great. It's great for me to hear. It's great for, 
you know, those, those of us that are really, you know, doing whatever we can to support this music and, and just really wanting all these bands that we love to keep going. So that, that means the world to me. Um, but so was this left from the, the first, uh, from the first record? Was it cut down there in Louisiana or? No, we actually cut this. We did this over thanks right after Thanksgiving. We went back up to Natchez and okay. recorded it at the same studio. Right on. We did it. We did it with Burn Sharp, okay. and uh, we did it right after Thanksgiving. So, so what's that? That you guys like seem to really enjoy working with Burn. Is that just a real natural, easygoing kind of thing for you guys to work with him up up there? He's got a great studio, and he's a great producer. So, um, it's just we, we've always. We have a lot of history in the city of Natchez. Mm -hmm. um, so it just, it's always been natural to record up there. So. So how's it feel to, you know, the, the train's starting to roll again now, but how's uh, it, is that hard to put into words how much joy that is for, for you guys, for all musicians? It feels good, man. And um, everything is starting up again pretty quickly. You know, it seems like the world was still shut down four weeks ago and then overnight it seemed like festivals started announcing lineups and bands started announcing their tours and of course we're on a major booking agency we we started working with this booking agency shortly after the pandemic started and so obviously they couldn't do much with us but now that they're getting their bigger bands booked up they're slowly working on an our on our tour so in the next right few on. weeks you guys will hear some more about some support dates that we're doing some right on some runs and some some stuff like that. So it's, it's pretty exciting stuff right around the band, man. So you guys got to go out there and play with Buck Cherry. That's correct, right? We did. We had four dates with Buck Cherry in Florida in February. And that was a, an, inc an incredible experience. Right on. Um, you know, I, I'm, uh, as we're talking, I'm thinking back to, you know, the, from uh, Throttle Fest there in Huntsville and what a great lineup that was. And just, I'm just always so, you know, amazed and astonished, like how, how these great bills are put together down there. Yeah, man, it's, we, we've talked about this in the past, just this wealth of um, emerging bands in the South right now, you know, like the Josephines and the Georgia Thunderbolts, them Dirty Roses, all just kind of fall under this classic rock, Southern mm -hmm. rock, hard rock category. And it's just, uh, we're starting to see, more often than not, the promoters are wanting to put all of us on the same bill, on the same ticket for festivals and stuff like that. And it really does feel like there's this revival of Southern Rock down here right now. Very much like when Leonard Skinner and the Allman Brothers and Wet Willie and all those bands they used to run together back in the day. It's kind of like we're all coming up in the scene together and it feels really special. Right. We had uh, one of our guests a uh, month back or so, it was Nick Reeves from Joyous Wolf. I know the pandemic, uh, you know, had shut down. You guys were going to do some dates with them. Yeah, we were, man. Great band. Fantastic band. Good guy. So I've heard, I've heard some, some talk uh, that we may be doing some dates with them again in the future. That'd so great. we're great. both, we're both on the same book and agency. So I'm sure it's going to happen at some point or right. another. And we, right. we definitely look forward to it. I think that'll be a great deal. Yeah. So where, where's the next date? Like what's the, where are you going next? This weekend, we are in Covington, Louisiana um, for the festival is called uh, Fool's Fest, Fool's Fest, Fool's Fest. Fool's Fest. So it's, it's this place called Covington Trailhead, and we're going to be taking the stage at 430. I think we got to have about an hour and a half set. So and then we have a few weeks off and then we're going to start our um, our summer tour. We're going to be headed out towards Idaho. Idaho is at the end of June, but we're going to actually start a small tour to get us out to Idaho, and mm -hmm. we'll hopefully be announcing those dates pretty soon, but we'll see. Now, that date in I Idaho, that's, <clears throat> uh, I've gathered that that's going to specifically a special show for you guys, and how long have you been doing that? Because that's quite the trek for you guys to go Mississippi up to Idaho. Let's see. The first year we did it was 2018. And so this will be our fourth year playing the festival. Right. And um, it, was the, it was the first major festival that we ever had the opportunity to play. We were working with some management at the time that had an in with the promoter. And the first time he booked us, <laughs> we were still a local band. We were hardly touring at all. So he booked the festival for us. <laughs> we, didn't have, we didn't have a van or anything. It was 30 hours out. So the first summer that we went, we just drove straight there and then came right back. And it was funny because... 
we kept talking to all these bands that were on the festival and uh, we were like, where are you guys headed next? Where are you coming from? And all these guys, they'd been on the road for two or three months straight. And they were like, where did you come from? And we said home. <laughs> and they, they were 30 hours away and they're like, oh, cool. Where are you going next? And we're like, uh, home. <laughs> so, but this will be our fourth year doing it. And um, last year we didn't get to tour there or back, but this year, now that we're on this booking agency, we're going to make a pretty extensive tour out of it. So that's really exciting. You know, the other day, uh, it might have been yesterday or the day before, I believe Dee Dee posted uh, <laughs> some pictures from the, the crawfish boil that you guys played. And I'm like looking at that lineup and it's like, you know, you guys and and uh, Bishop Gunn when they were still going and, and Blackstone Cherry. And it's just like, wow, what a lineup. And Southern Avenue too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, that was a... That was a uh, once in a lifetime experience, man. Yeah, it was cool. It's cool to see that lineup. And Blackstone Cherry, man, they're such nice guys. They were very, very nice to us. Yeah. We've, so. had, we've had Chris on, so hoping to get some of the other guys on, maybe, hopefully. So, but yeah, uh, Drew, thank you uh, for joining us for this little uh, quick hitter short segment. And uh, we're going to be playing that video right after this. And, uh, you know, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, we'll be uh, hopefully uh, having you on again and always uh, being in touch with you guys. And we just love all the music you make. So thank you so much. It's always a pleasure, man. Thank you for having me. All right, man. We'll see you later, Drew. Yeah, have a good one. Take it easy. Five by the skin of our teeth Say what's left before we're blind You know working for a man ain't been too kind no. Stop, no, it don't stop. Train don't 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 stop, no, it don't st
Train don't stop for no one Train